Welcome to the Big Movement Podcast. If you're ready to create results and make huge strides in your business, finances, personal development, and health, then you're in the right place. Pushing past excuses and powering through procrastination can be a challenge alone. Here, you'll get the support, tools, and knowledge you need to get to the level you desire in your business and life. Let's get started with your host, Byron Ingram. And welcome to another episode of the Big Movement Podcast. And today we have a special guest. We have Crystal Rinkes, who is a writing coach and a publishing consultant, helping female entrepreneurs step into their purpose by assisting them in writing and publishing their own books on six major platforms that include print and digital. So let's give a warm welcome to Crystal. So, Crystal, welcome. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Great. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, um, I uh, live in Boston, Mass. Um, that's where I am based. Um, I have two little guys here um, that are five and two. So uh, I work on my business around these guys' schedule and stuff. So, um, yeah. And uh, one thing that I really liked when I was growing up uh, a lot was actually the literary world. I knew um, since I could pick up a pen at four years old that um, – that I was going to work in publishing or writing or be an author one day. So um, it's just kind of stuck with me. I loved it ever since that I picked up a pen and I've always loved writing and reading. So that's why I got into this. I felt that uh, there was a lot of people that needed, needed help getting their word out. So that's why I started this whole, uh, this whole business. Now, and that's just interesting that you knew from an early age, there's, only so many people out there that, you know, they know from that early age, they're going to do blank. But then some people, you know, you think about how many kids out there, they'll say, oh, I'm going to do this. And then growing up, they do something different. How did you just stick with this path over the years? Because that's not as common as you would think. Um, honestly, uh, I took a, a an interest early on in both literature and you know like uh the literary arts and um history and when I was younger I would actually instead of going outside I would sit in my room and read book after book after book after book and I began to appreciate more and more as time went on the written art um, and that is eventually how I became, you know, that that's the type of creative that I became afterwards was in the form of the written art, as opposed to, you know, singing or dancing or painting. That was my art was words. And, um, you know, as time went, went on, um, you know, reading a lot helps you with your vocabulary and things like that. And I knew that I was on the right path when I was in fifth grade um, because at my fifth grade graduation, it came as a surprise to me. But for that year, we took the end of year exams. And on the exams, there was a um, the writing portion, um, as people are probably familiar with. And on that, I earned the second highest score in the States out of everybody, everybody that took that test in the States um, of Florida, because that's where I was living. And I actually got a silver medal award um, from, at the time it was President Bush, um, George W. Bush. He signed a certificate and sent me a medal um, for that achievement. So I got the silver medal award that year. And that's whenever I knew this is where I'm supposed to be. Um, because before I kind of knew that I wanted to do that, but whenever I hit that point in my life, I was like, this is definitely where I'm supposed to be. Wow. Now that's amazing. <laughs> you had that confirmation at that age and then you just kept going with it. And then how did you start really developing your skill set over the years? Because there's so many facets of writing and you had to decide upon it. Um, whenever I actually took a, a huge interest in books and the things that I used to do whenever I used to read was break them down. Um, you know, I'd examine every single part of the book and it may sound crazy, um, for somebody to be staring at a book for a good hour and not reading it. Um, but you know, I, I looked at the different elements of the book. What is it that um, you know, comprised of the whole book because you can't just, you know, the contents aren't everything, you know, it, it has to do with the cover and, um, 
the back and just everything that invites the reader. And so I looked at the different parts of the book. What, you know, what year was it published? Was there a copyright on there? Um, what did the art look like? How was it that it was put together? You know, um, was this a very popular book or was it not? And, you know, I just kind of looked at the different aspects of them. And every time that I did, it's just like I fell in love with books more and more. And it's like, um, you know, when I was younger, uh, I volunteered in a library um, just cause, and it might sound weird just so I can go in that library and smell the smell of books. Um, because that was, you know, like my, in my second home, honestly, the library was my mm-hmm. second home and I used to volunteer, um, all the time at my school library just to be able to, um, have the smell of the books and to learn the Dewey decimal system. And no kid I've ever known once, you know, sets out to learn the Dewey decimal system just because, <laughs> Right. I mean, it's it, when you think about it today, how many people actually have an incentive to know how to use the Dewey Decimal System? Um, only people that uh, are librarians. And, you know, like it's like uh, I think it's a library art or something like that. Like a, there's actual courses to do that in colleges these days um, to learn that. So mm-hmm. um, right. I was like in sixth or seventh grade that I learned Dewey Decimal System is just kind of interesting. <laughs> Right. There was a time that it was common to understand how to use it because that was the only way you were ever going to find a book at a library. And now with technology, you don't even need to know how to of what it means. Just kind of go to a little terminal, type in what you're looking for. Oh, it's over here. Go get it. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, uh, like I've told you it. before, kind of like the, the technology kind of repels me a bit. So um, <laughs> I am highly appreciative of everything that's kind of traditional, um, of older things. Uh, a lot of times I remark to my husband and, and close friends and family, I swear I was born in the wrong century. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> so it, it's just like one of those things that I, that I think that I'm very old fashioned. <laughs> ah, well, there's nothing wrong with being old fashioned unless you want to, let's say, be on the interstate in a horse and buggy. Then there's a problem. Yes. <laughs> that would be a little too slow. <laughs> yes, but <laughs> yeah. So I think that in certain things that I'm, I'm very old fashioned, but you know, there's no, uh, there's no crime in that. Um, Not at all. So how did you get into with what you're doing now? Because you have this deep passion for the literary arts. Yes. Um, the way that I got into this was um, I was in uh, numerous uh, situations when I was younger. Um, for most of my, uh, the end of my teenage years and um, the beginning of my young adult life, um, I went through a lot of um, situations. Namely, I, w- I w- am a survivor of domestic violence. Um, I was actually in a homeless shelter for four years. And uh, that was. Uh, you know, two, two different situations that I knew did not define me as a person. Um, Mm -hmm. and so I wanted to move past those things and change my life and really pursue what I wanted to do. And once I was actually stable enough to do that, um, you know, I, I really just dove into how is it that you can, you know, publish books and what is it that is needed and, you know, who, you know, is, is, is the type of people that would be looking for that, you know, and basically that's anybody. And something that, you know, really motivated me was um, just like a, a whole lot of, uh, I'm in a lot of groups on Facebook for female entrepreneurs specifically. I don't work with only female entrepreneurs, but you know, like that's mostly the women, the people that I service are women. And um, I just saw like a lot of strong individuals um, and that's mm-hmm. what drew me to them um, is because that they were in the same spot that I was or they had been in the same spot that I was, you know, way back when. And they were so helpful and just um, they helped me every single time that I needed something in developing my business. And I really appreciated that. And so that's why I decided why not, you know, help people, especially women who are trying to build their own businesses to get published? 
um, because that will help a lot of people, um, later on, it'll help leverage their business, but at the same time, it'll, you know, help them spread their message and it might spark change in the mind of somebody else, even though I might not be the person that is actually, uh, changing the world. Um, and you know, they're the one that's delivering the message and I'm helping them deliver that message. It might be somebody that reads their book or reads what they're doing that will actually, uh, take action to make change in the world. Um, because change and, uh, and, uh, actions actually, they, they start with an idea. Um, it all starts with an idea. And then from that idea, you make actions to, in order for you to, um, to get where you want to go. And, uh, that's where I started initially was the idea that I could help people and change the world. I think that's where it started. And that's a a common way that people start. Mm -hmm. It's you have that experience and then there's that defining moment when you realize you have to take this passion that you have and share it because it's not about you. It's about helping other people Mm -hmm. because you you have that gift definitely because you know we weren't given gifts um to hoard them right you know they're they're called gifts for a reason because you give with them you don't hoard it you give it to others you know you help others um and that's why it's called a gift exactly so then how did you start sharing your gift um, honestly, my, it's kind of funny. It's a, a little ironic. Um, my father, he, uh, he's a survivalist. Um, and he has always wanted to publish a book. Um, even since before I was born, I believe. And so, um, I actually started with my father, my own dad, um, in publishing his book. Um, it's the irony comes from that. My dad wanted to publish a book and he was rejected. God knows a million times. And, Mm -hmm. um, his daughter grew up to be a publisher. That's the ironic part about it. Isn't it funny? Um, so, you know, like in, in helping him, I was like, you know what, this is something that I need to be doing on a broader scale and with more people because, uh, you know, just for those people who are not getting these book deals and keep being rejected, there is a way for them to still get published. And yeah, it might work, but you know, work, but you know, I will help them with that, you know? I'll be the person that helps them to get through that process from the, of, of, of their, you know, idea, con- the conception of their idea, or, you know, that's all that they have. It starts with an idea and that's where right. you move forward, you know, and some people, they have like 10 different ideas and, you know, like what I help them do is what is it really that they believe they're passionate at in the moment? You know, what is the thing that is most ap- important to them? And I help them decide that. And from there, that's where the coaching starts and, you know, what is the best thing to, you know, like, how do you write this or, you know, mirroring uh, ideas off of each other or, um, you know, just getting them past those writer's blocks um, because those are the main things that um, that prevent writers from actually finishing their books is um, not setting goals, not having outlines, not having somebody to converse with um, whenever they get stuck and actually, you know, getting past those blocks. Those are like the four main things. And, um, that's what I try to help people with, um, and just be that support system through, um, through the writing process and then, you know, helping them in the more fun parts, you know, later on with the, you know, editing and proofreading and, you know, design and formatting and then finally publishing. Right. And you mentioned before that there's other ways of getting published, especially because people are getting rejected by these big publishers. What are some of those ways that people can go about getting published? Oh, no. Um, a lot of the people that I work with um, are indie authors, and indie authors are mainly self-published individuals. But, um, you know, with me, there's like a way, you know, there are different ways to become published. Um, a lot of people think of self-publishing as just being on Amazon, and it's, you know, so much more than that. Um With this, you know, like you can put your ebook up on Amazon, but you know, what next? That's not the only place out there that you can put your book, you know? Um, there are different other platforms that make, um, you know, written material available to people. And, um, you know, what I do is I help them to 
you know, set up their accounts and everything and actually uh, set their books up on the different platforms, um, including for Barnes and Noble, the Nook, um, iBooks, um, Kobo. Those are like the, some of the bigger ones um, in both print and digital. Um, so there's, uh, you know, a, a platform that I like to use for the eBooks to be able to make them available on the, on the digital platforms. And then there's, mm-hmm. um, another platform that I use for print on demand, um, that does the same platforms, but, um, it's for print books and you don't have to worry about, you know, ordering a surplus of these books and having them stacked up to the ceiling in your living room and never selling them because, you know, as somebody buys them from, the Barnes and Noble website or, you know, iBooks um, on their uh, iPhone or, or iPad or, you know, anywhere that is um, on the platform. As soon as they buy that book, that's whenever it's printed off. So you don't have to sit here and, ha- you know, sit on a surplus of books and then, you know, like lose money instead of, you know, actually gaining money and, and getting somewhere, you know? Right. As there is nothing that be more prohibitive for someone to think that they're going to have to fill their garage full of books and then be on at every single event around town. Like, come on, you know, you want to buy a book? Like, no, I want to buy groceries. No, you're buying a book. You want to get away from that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because people don't like the, the extreme, like um, aggressive uh, selling like that. And not saying that you don't market your book because there's a difference between marketing and trying to sell aggressively, you know, um, you know, and, and, and there are different ways to market the book. There's uh, a way that I really love to use. Um, and I put it up on, you know, uh, I try to get them to put together a YouTube channel. Um, Mm -hmm. and what I do is I use, um, windows movie maker and I put together book trailers, just like a trailer you would see for any of these movies that are out here. Um, you know, to create suspense, what I do is I do the same thing for books. Um, you know, telling them what the book is about or who it's by or, you know, the ideals that is, um, you know, in, in the book and stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. and I put a book trailer together and, you know, people respond better to, um, graphics that's you know uh pictures and also video um lately it's video so what i do is i put that book trailer together they can post it up on their facebook twitter or wherever you know like they have their social media and stuff and people are gonna their attention is gonna be grabbed because a lot of people like to go to those videos even before pictures right now what's been the over response with that strategy, because this is the first time I've heard of someone using YouTube to promote a book. Usually you just see people putting it within Facebook groups or writing Facebook ads to it, but YouTube, now that's different. Mm-hmm. No, um, you know, what happens is uh, there is an algorithm that uh, especially Google uses, and Google is one of the main um, you know, main uh, search engines that's used these days, um, even before like Yahoo and Bing and all of these other places, Google is, you know, a household name. They're the very first thing you think of whenever you, you know, want to go look for something. And a lot of times there is, uh, there are methods that will get your videos from YouTube because YouTube is owned by Google. Um, there are ways to get your YouTube's, uh, YouTube videos higher in ranking. And you can go on Google and you could look to see what keywords are getting um, high responses um, on Google search engines. And you can use those in your titles of your videos on YouTube and it will come up higher in the SEO on Google's webpage whenever it's searched. Um, and the amount of times that that is actually used in the voice during the YouTube video itself. Um, if you have like any subtitles on there, the amount of times that those actual keywords are used in there. And also, Mm -hmm. um, that you use that, um, you know, maybe possibly in your YouTube channel itself under the name, or you use it in the actual title of the, um, of the video for the book trailer. Um, that will get a much higher response and higher SEO in the Google algorithm. So that will put that higher up, um, in the search results. 
And we right. kind of use that. Yeah, we kind of use that in order to get more clicks. And then people watch that and that can translate into, you know, like more sales on their um, on their books. And in the description of the video, you put the actual link of where the book can be found, like wherever it is, iBooks or Amazon or wherever you want the traffic to go. That's where you stick it mm-hmm. um, in the description. And people will click that link because what people want to do these days is they don't want to have to go and search. So if you provide it for them right there, they're more likely to click it right there instead of having to go search for your book elsewhere, you know? You provide the link, and that's where they go. They'll click on that link, and they'll go look. Right. Okay. And what's been the result of using YouTube? Um, the results actually are, uh, uh, you know, a lot better than you would think. Um, there's been, you know, there are actually, like, very high conversion rates on there um, from people that, that view the the book trailers and to the actual mm-hmm. sales of the books. Um, you know, for different clients it's different. So I don't want to like make uh, an actual quote of how, you know, how high the conversions are, but you know, there is a good correlation between the actual like book trailers that I do and the way that we try to optimize them. And then afterwards, mm-hmm. you know, like the, the actual sales that are driven from the YouTube. Um, and what I prefer to do is I, I prefer to use uh bit links um, for, you know, like in the description of the YouTube, the YouTube video, um, because you can actually mm-hmm. scale and you can actually see how many times it was linked and you can, um, those links are clicked and see the actual tracking information on that, where it comes from. Oh, excellent. And that's so if you definitely important. Dotly, you know, forward slash, whatever the name of the book is, then, you know, like you can actually track where the traffic comes from and how many times that link has been clicked. Right. Oh, excellent. That's just a great tip overall when it comes down to it. Mm-hmm. And because you, you have to do things that are different that help you stand out in a crowded marketplace. Yeah, I know. Because, you know, people uh, people like to think that they can use like the 80s car salesman ways of doing things. And it's like that's one thing that I had to kind of like jump over um, when I was learning this because – uh, I'm a very traditional person. And so that means, you know, like I was kind of a, of a certain mentality, but what I had to learn is, um, you know, try to see how many different ways, um, you will be able to market this thing, um, and kind of find what works. Um, uh, because it's not always going to be those ancient ways of marketing and selling, you know, like there's a, a technology is moving along so fast. And people get so, you know, like their, their attention spans, you know, they, they change like this, you know? Um, so they have to, you have to move with it. And if I'm going to be successful in my business and and I'm going to, you know, help create the success of the people I work with, then I have to, you know, keep moving on and see what works and what doesn't and do it very quickly. Right. Exactly. It's all about the speed of implementation. The faster you implement new ideas, Mm -hmm. the better off you are. Mm-hmm, definitely. And that's just so vital and important. So you leverage YouTube, and that's a very innovative way to promote it. Mm-hmm. What are some of those other things that people need to be thinking about that gets away from the, let's say, that slimy tactics or things that you might see people doing that are good ideas, the best practices? Um. So... The best practices that I see when, when people are marketing their books, um, one thing that I can tell you not to do, um, right away, and I'll start with the things not to do, um, because it'll make better way for the things to do. Um, a lot of people like to directly share on Twitter. Um, I've seen that it does have like a certain, um, amount of, you know, like effectability, you know, it is a certain, it is effective to a point. But, um, when people are, um, actually looking on their social media, a lot of times they're not trying to be sold to, um, you know, because they're there for recreation. So there's certain social media that is like more business. And then there's other ones that are more, um, you know, recreation. Twitter happens to be one of the ones that are more like recreation. So, um, a lot of times people will just like scroll down past your, you know, your posts on Twitter. Um, if you put your book up there 
And so that's one of the tactics that I would not say don't do, but don't do it a whole lot um, because it'll just get scrolled past. You know, on Facebook, it's different um, because there are like actual groups and things that you can go into. And that's one of the tactics that I have um, found successful um, being in different groups on Facebook because you can go in there and a lot of these groups, even though they might be like a closed group, um, you can go in there and you can interact with people that are interested in the same thing as you. And a lot of times they have mm -hmm. promotion days and they will allow you to go in there and promote your business or promote your book or, you know, like a work that you're working on with one of your clients, things like that. And um, it actually helps to create a, uh, a community of people or a tribe that is interested in the same things as you. So you already know that these th that these people are interested in what you're selling or what you have. And then afterwards, you know, it's just uh, setting it up in a way and becoming visible enough to where these people will be interested in hearing what you have to say. And that will help them become your raving fans. Afterwards, it'll be easier to sell these things to them, especially on promotion days and stuff. So that's a tactic that I've used um uh, a whole lot is that the Facebook groups um, and people would think, you know, you go on there for recreation, you just scroll through your newsfeed. No, there's actual groups that you can interact with people worldwide that, you know, uh, are interested in certain things. And they really actually don't even care if you're trying to sell to them on a promotion day um, because that's written into the group. So um, that is definitely a way that I would think that you can um, leverage that um, in order to, you know, promote yourself in your sales and your books. Right. And Facebook is extremely powerful, especially when you use it properly, like the different groups mm -hmm. that are focused on it. Because if you look at it, there's groups out there where people, they want to learn about new books out there because they want to read new topics and information. Mm -hmm. And outside of using social media, what are some of the other ways that people, you know, can promote their books effectively? You know, you hear some people, they're going like, doing book tours and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about those? No, um, what, what I try to do is um, have my clients um, featured even in like local bookstores first um, because okay. people that um, already know you and, and, and like you, they're going to, you know, trust your product better. Um, and that's actually a simple business module, you know, no like trust. Um, you know, have people right. get to know you and they'll get to like you and what you do. And then, you know, they'll trust what you're selling to them or they'll trust you as a person. And so since you already have that established in your community, what I try to have people do is, you know, go ahead and print off a few print books that you have or even offer to, you know, whatever librarian that you have over there at your local library or even a local bookseller or somebody, you know, have them read your stuff. Don't be afraid to give away a couple copy, copies of your book because um, if you aren't um, if you aren't allowing people to sample your work or see what it is that you're doing then your word's not going to get spread out there you're not going to get those reviews that you so desperately need um, because people aren't going to buy off of an online um, platform if there aren't reviews that's just how it is you know if you are going into your uh, into your app store um, you know, to get an app for your phone, are you going to go get it just because you want to go get it? Or are you going to look at the, um, reviews on it first? You're going to look at the reviews. Um, right. so in order to get those reviews, sometimes you have to do, um, bait, you have beta readers, which are people mm -hmm. that you give your book to for them to read. And in exchange, you know, you get, uh, a book review from them. Um, and also you can give a copy to, you know, like your local booksellers or, or people that are around you that sell books um, for them to read it. And then from that, you know, if they're really interested in it, then they'll see this is a valuable product. You know, I want to stock my shelves with a few of these to sell them, you know, um, and that'll convert from, you know, just somebody that reads the book to somebody that wants to sell your book for you. Um, and that's where it starts. And you you can do, you know, um, different like reading, reading, um, reading events where the author goes and reads certain amount of 
uh, a certain amount of their book and they can have a signing afterwards or they can sell them afterwards, you know, and that's where the book signing starts. Um, you know, that's where those tours starts is you start locally, you can travel around your state if you want to. And then av- as it gets more visibility, then, you know, you'll have people contacting you about it because, you know, there's always six degrees of separation between any two people in the world. So, you know, like right. I might not, might not know somebody, but the person that reads this book might say it to somebody, you know, might recommend it to someone else and they might know someone that would be, uh, you know, really important to me, you know? Um, so right. you always want to see the different avenues that you can go because sometimes don't be afraid to, you know, give away a couple copies because you, that might be, you know, what makes or breaks you. Um, because a lot of people are in this, uh, field just to, you know, like make money off of other people from buying their books. And it's not exactly like that. You have to give in order to receive. Right. Exactly. It's, it's always about giving, especially when you think about the content that's in a book that people want to convey. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about the, the books out there? Because you, know, you see so many programs out there that teach people how to write a book extremely fast. But when you look at some of the books that people create, it's almost like one big sales pitch. What are your feelings about those types of books? Honestly, um, those write your book fast um, programs, I, um, you know, I personally think there are certain people out there that they can actually write a book quickly and be very effective at writing it and do it very well. Other people, not so much. Um, it just depends on the type of person you are. And, you know, what I like to do is I like to help people to find what they are truly passionate about first. Um, and what their priority, um, for their books are, or what their priorities in their life is versus the priorities of their books and their ideas and see if any of them actually correlate. And the thing, and the more, um, I- ideas that you have that correlate with your priorities in life, it's like a bucket. You know, if you have a bucket for, you know, um, your family or your bus- business or, you know, other, you know, uh, creative ventures in your life. You know, and you have all these different ideas and stuff. You can take each idea and put them in that bucket that correlates with it. And the more that you accumulate in each bucket, you know, it, you get to know how important each thing in your life is and which ones are your main priorities now, you know. Um, and so what I help people find out is which one is the most priority for them at the moment and which one is their most passionate uh, thing in the moment. Because if you're actually really passionate about something – and you deem that an, a priority, you're more willing to finish that book instead of starting it and then halfway through it saying, I quit. Um, and that's something that right. I help them with is to find what is it that you feel is most important to you right now in this moment and in this part of your life that you want to write a book and you have so many ideas that you want to go with, but you can't choose. And then the one that they find is their most passion is probably the one that they're going to finish the most, you know, the easiest and maybe even the quickest because that's what they, you know, that's something that is really important to them. Right. And that's so critical to do something that's of importance right now because it doesn't make sense to write a book where you don't have any interest in it because it's going to show in the writing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, you know, like these, uh, these programs, you know, uh, they don't take into uh, consideration that piece, you know, yeah, you could, you know, idealistically write a book in, in 90 days or, you know, 30 days or whenever it is that these programs tell you, but, um, you know, how, uh, how important is that book to you really, if you just want to get the book out and start making money right away? Like, how important is that book? Because, you know, to me, my books are my babies, you know, they're like my children, Um, you know, so you got to take care of them and you have to really, you know, uh, uh, let them grow and, and, and you have to let those books flourish in the way they're supposed to and not kind of force them. Because whenever you, whenever you are, you know, uh, whenever you are raising your children, you try to help them flourish and grow and uh, you nourish your children and you nurture your children. And the same thing is for your books, you know, Um, and people that do these programs for write your book in 30 days and whatever, 
you know, they're not taking that into account because those are, those are not important books to them. Those are not important mm -hmm. books to them because they're not willing to spend a little bit of time and actually get that book written the way that they really truly want it to be. Um, as compared of, you know, compared to doing it done quickly. So, um, right. I would just, you know, to me, I would recommend spend a little bit more time. Um, because then you will be able to connect to your audience better and you will be able to connect to that book better. You'll connect that book to yourself a little bit better. You'll feel better writing it, um, than just trying to hurry and get it done. Um, and it'll show your audience will appreciate that because they'll see that it was a work of, you know, it was a work of love as compared to a work of time. Right. Exactly. And that's so vital and you mentioned having a book flourish mm -hmm. outside of obviously you know someone you know, you know having the book sales then you know they're doing the book tour in the local different bookstores what are some of the other ways you've seen people they flourished because they wrote a book um a lot of times even for uh people that are in in um other creative spaces um you know, there are people that, you know, they might dance or they might, you know, sing or whatever it may be. And books help you become a thought leader in your area of expertise, no matter what it may be. Um, you know, people, you know, generally do write a book in order for them to, um, spread a message to a large amount of people. And, you know, what I help people with is they, um, they define their own success. What is their idea of success? Um, and that might seem like a crazy idea, um, right now. So I'll explain it to you because if you aren't successful in your own eyes or, you know, in the eyes of other people, then you're not really doing this for yourself you're doing it for these other people. Um, you know, if you want to write this book just so that your friends and family can see that you wrote a book, then, and that's your idea of success, then go ahead and do that. Um, if you want this book to be, you know, at a larger scale and you want other people to be able to see it and, you know, even that you're getting, just getting your message out there in any way at all, um, you know, then that's your success. If you want to use this book as a way to leverage your business as an opt-in, um, you know, to an email list or something, um, and that's your success, then, you know, go ahead and do that. You know, success is not, a you know, a one size fits all type. Um, and that is where people, uh, are misunderstanding, you know, uh, the way of things in the world. Not everyone is looking for the same thing. Um, and not everyone sees success as being the same thing. So, you know, as long as you reach your own personal goals and what you want out of your writing and what you want as a person, um, then, you know, that should bring you your happiness. And that's what I help try to help people do is define what it is that you want to do with this book. What is your idea of success? And we do this in the very beginning. What is your idea of success? And then if we can figure out what your idea of success is, that's where we make your goals for these books. You know, mm -hmm. we have to have a good solid foundation for us to build our goals off of and build this book off of, because if not, it's just going to, you know, crumble and die. And, you know, I try to help people set themselves up for their idea of success, not necessarily the uh, world's concept of success or, you know, so-and-so's concept of success because not everyone sees that the same way. Do, uh, do you understand what I'm trying to right. say? Oh, definitely. Because when, when you start measuring success compared to someone else, it can create a, a sense of inaccuracy because someone had a head start versus success for you. It's an individual journey because you, you have a different deck of cards. You started the game of life with. Mm -hmm, definitely. And it's like these, you know, I believe that in, in the time that I, you know, help people with their books, it is a journey and I'm trying to help, you know, uh, 
help these people get from A to B. And in this time period, I like to think of myself as their, their shepherd, their little book shepherd. Um, <laughs> and you can laugh if you want. Right. Um, their little book shepherd, and they're my little sheep, and I'm trying to get them to, you know, safer ground and stuff, you know? So I'm trying to get them from A to B. Um, you know, and during that time, I take care of them and I make sure that they're, uh, they're sticking to their goals. And some people, you know, I have to be a little bit harder on because, you know, they like to procrastinate a little bit, but, um, there's other people that do very well. Um, and, you know, we have our once a week meeting, um, and we're fine. And then there's other people that have to put two and three meetings in a week. Um, in order for them to get this thing done. And guess what? I don't mind doing that. It's just that, you know, if they need the help, then I'll help them. And that is to get them to their, their idea of success because they're not going to get that idea. They're not going to get to that part of success if they're not completing their goals to get there. Right. Exactly. Definitely. So now tell me out of all the things there, as we begin to wrap up, think, what is one thing you would recommend people do? when they're thinking about writing a book? The one thing that I would think of recommending to someone is, um, actually I have two things. One thing would be, um, to first, um, first formulate a list of what you prioritize in life. Um, you know, what are your priorities in your life? What are most, the most important things to you? And then form another list of what your ideas for a book would be and see if any of those match up and definitely go with the things that, you know, basically the, the ones that have the most things correlating to these most important things in your life, because that is what's going to be the basis off of your passion for this book and what's going to help drive you. Um, and the second thing is talk to people about it. Um, talk to people about your book that you're writing your book and have somebody, you know, that's close to you be an accountability partner, at least somebody that can help you, you know, through this, uh, stage in your life, somebody that's there to support you, somebody that's there to, um, you know, help you with your ideas and, and just be there all the time for you. Um, because sometimes people, they like to write books by themselves, but a lot of times if they have somebody that's there to support them and to help them through it, um, you know, they're going to be more, um, they're going to be able to finish their, their books better. They're going to be uh, more likely to actually get to the end and say, yes, I did it. And then be ready to go over and edit and proofread. And then, you know, all the rest of the steps to be able to actually publish this thing. And they will be a lot closer to achieving their goals and their idea of success because they have someone that's there to help them be, help them be accountable for their book and for themselves, you know, um, and, right. and to kind of help them get unstuck when they are stuck, you know, um, those are, I think the two things that I would say is definitely find what it is that you're truly passionate about by writing those two lists and also have a, an accountability partner, somebody that is really, um, supportive of you in every venture that you have, um, in writing this book, because sometimes you'll need somebody to talk to. And if it's frustrating or just to get over the worst parts of, um, of writing, because it, sometimes it can be a grueling experience because, uh, you, you come up across blocks all the time. And it's just like, there's days that you just like, can I just lay in bed for another five minutes when I should be writing? But you know, really to get through, have somebody that can, uh, you know, be there for you and hold you accountable for that. Right. Definitely. So now how can people learn more about what you do and ultimately contact you? Okay. Um, so, uh, you can reach me on my website, www.prints, P R I N T S by pepper as in this evening, prints by pepper.com. Um, I am also on Facebook at the handle at author K R Pena. Um, and on Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat, I am at the same handle at Prince by Pepper, P R I N T S B Y P E P P E R, um, on Twitter, Instagram, and on Snapchat. So that's where you can find me. And I am constantly updating those social media. And you can definitely find me on my website, um, and shoot me a message there. 
Awesome. Well, it's been great having you on the Big Movement Podcast today, sharing your insights about your background and then also the literary world of how people can be able to get a book out there to position themselves as an expert in their industry. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's been so nice to uh, to speak with you and be on the podcast. I, I'm really honored that you invited me um, to be a part of this and uh, help me spread my message. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Thanks for listening to the Big Movement Podcast today. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Now that you've surely been inspired to take your entrepreneurial career and business to the next level, you can stop by the website and get more. And if you're ready to boost your business brand, be sure to grab your free report, Seven Easy Steps to Build Your Brand Today.